I'm American, but you're, where are you originally from? From Ghana, All West right. Africa. So I wanted to get a little bit of perspective here. What is it like being a black man in China? If I've been able to live in China as a black man for 10 years, then you should know there's something about this country that you don't know. So one of the amazing things about having a YouTube channel about China is the ability to connect with people from all over the world. And because I'm coming back to China for the first time in four years, I want to connect with some of the best content creators here on the ground in China. Now, in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to an expat named King, and he has an amazing potential on YouTube. And what he does is he goes around all over China and he showcases what life is really like here. He is the king of street interviews. And today we're in Shanghai. He has flown in from the Shandong province just to meet me. I'm so excited. He's right behind me. Let's go in and give him a little surprise here. There he is. My man. My man, what's oh, man. going on, brother? Good How are you, you, man? Good, good to see you. Good to see you, man. Fantastic. Trying to grab the oh, man, that's awesome, man. Let's, let's, get some, let's get some food and then we'll make some content. Sure. So, so this man right here has been to Africa, uh, and his message is amazing about the get out of Africa. So here's so funny. King has met a, a fan who's been to Africa. So it's so much fun to make friends. <laughs> So people ask, what's it like to be a black man in China? This is what it's like right here. Yeah. Well, everybody, we are here in People's Square. This is one of the most beautiful parks in downtown Shanghai. And I'm joined by a close friend of mine that I met online. He is a fellow YouTuber that has an amazing YouTube channel. King Kwesi. King, yeah. King Kwesi. This is King Kwesi. He has an awesome YouTube channel. King, I, I first discovered your YouTube channel because one of the things I, I, that, I, that I really love is that you try to showcase what real life is like in China, just talking to Chinese people, talking to foreigners, and I think you do a great job of the street interviews. I, I, I was really inspired by that, and I was coming here to Shanghai, and I thought, hey, let's get a vlog together, just you and I, because we're both expats here. Right. I'm American. But you're, where are you originally from? From Ghana, right. West Africa. West Africa, right. right? So I wanted to get a little bit of perspective here. You know, what is it like being a black man in China? You know, this is an interesting thing mm. because I, th I think, um, you know, it's a little bit different for me being Caucasian. And uh, I just, I'm very curious to know this. And I want to I wanna hear, you know, you've been here for 10 years in China. And I want to know what what has your experience has been like inside of this country? I have mean, you been have you been welcomed here? You know, just tell us your story. Man, I've been here for ten years. If I've been able to live in China for ten years, it means like it's amazing. It's an amazing country. Um, I came here in 2013 after college, and I decided to have a better life for myself. At first, China was not an option because you know back home we used to hear a lot about China, which was not present to me. Okay. So I wanted to go to the U.S. I wanted to go to Canada, but I was not a visa. And a friend was in China. I said, like, come to China. China is a great place. So I got a visa and I came to China as a student first in Guilin. Okay. But along the way, I got a school. So um, I transitioned from a student to a work visa. Okay. And I've been working here for almost 10 years. Okay. Being a black person in China, that's a deep question because we have different experiences. But if I want to speak for myself and my family, because I had a family here, I would say China is one of the best places I've been to because I've traveled to about six countries around Asia. I've been to Thailand, I've been to um, Indonesia, Philippines, Russia. But China, I always call China home. Yeah. Because living here, I had a daughter born in China. I'm from Africa and to have a kid, you need to have a family around you. We had no family here, I had just my wife and my daughter. But Chinese people were there for us. My boss was there for us. My, my, landlord, my landlord was there for us. Yeah. They were ready and willing to help us at any time. So I would say like, if I'm speaking for myself, I know that China is a great place. You have, this, you have issues with people, like for example, people will treat you different because you're a foreigner, not because they hate you or not because they dislike you, but because you're different. When you're more open and you try to engage Chinese people by speaking their language, yeah. they just open up yeah, that's and it. they glow. And yeah. one thing I realized about China, when they speak a bit of Chinese, yeah. oh man, they welcome you to their home. You know, you know what's amazing? There's a famous quote from Nelson Mandela. Mm. Have you heard of this quote? No. And so Nelson Mandela, he said, when you speak to a man in a language that he Understand. understands, it goes to his head. But when you speak to a man in a language that is his mother tongue, it goes to his heart. Mm, that's, that's a beautiful quote. So I think that's a beautiful quote from Nelson Mandela. And I agree with you. I mean, just even speaking some simple words in Chinese, but it's also about, you know, learning the culture here, right? Right. You need to understand a little bit about China. I mean, we're walking through People's Square and as soon as, you know, Chinese people saw us with the cameras out. They were just open to they, us. They were just coming to us, you know, talking and just engaging with you. Just because you're different. That's and right. that's, what makes, that's what makes China a very beautiful country because people will accept you because you're different. 
Um, this is the only country that people walk up to you and bring their kids to take pictures with you. That's because right. you're a foreigner. Yeah, yeah, I've had that you know, a lot. You know, being I, I, big, I go, tall and a white guy. I go to the a... bar because of my hair. You know, I have this hair. Yeah. <laughs> because of my hair, I got free beer, you know, in the bar. People just come with you and have a beer like, Pijo, yeah, let's, yeah. let's drink. Uh, Gambe, let's drink because yeah, you're yeah. a foreigner. And I think most people here, they have never been to China. Most people haven't been to China. So they think that China is a different society. But when you get here, and you live in China for a day, two, or a week, or a month. Right. You know that the reputation about China out there is different from the reality here. Right, right. And that's a fact. Everybody that has been in China, most people when they are coming to China, they go like, okay, I'm gonna be in China for a year. <laughs> we end up living like five years. I know, I know. Well, you've been here for 10 years. I've been here for 10 years. And I, I spent 10 years I've here been here as well. for 10 years, you know? Yeah. So, if I'm speaking for myself, I know that China is an amazing country. Yeah. It is an amazing country. You have challenges, challenges in terms of maybe um, finding a job, right. because most jobs have a description of the kind of people they want, you right. understand? And I'm from Africa, and I'm from Ghana. Ghana as a country is not considered as a native speaking country. So okay. no matter how your English is good, some schools will not hire you to be a teacher in the school, right. because per the requirements of the Chinese government to teach in the school as an English teacher, you need what? Uh, you need to come from a native speaking country. Right. So in Africa, the only country that is considered as a native speaking country is South Africa. Right. So that would be a challenge for somebody coming from my country to work in China as a teacher. Gotcha. Because you are not considered as a native speaking country, you're gotcha. from Ghana. That's right. That's that's a challenge because of the system here. Right. But if you're able to get around the system and you have the right people around you, man, you love it. That's amazing. That's a great insight. You love it. King, one of the things that I, I heard, for example, is that throughout the COVID pandemic, and I was not here during the COVID right. pandemic, but I heard that you know, there was potentially some racism here in China, uh, you know, towards black people, mm. you know, and specifically that, you know, maybe black people had COVID or, right. uh, you know, there was a big fear. What about your personal experience? As My, a black man living in China during the COVID uh, pandemic, did you experience anything like that? Okay, so if I'm speaking about my personal experience, because at that time, during the COVID situation, I was in Yantai. Yantai is in the center province of China. Um, there were issues with black people in Guangzhou. Right. Guangzhou has always been a hotspot when it comes to the Africans and the Chinese people relationship, you know? Yeah, that, my, my wife is from Guangzhou, right. and I know there's a lot of, there's African, big, there's African, a lot of African, African community. Very big, Guang because they're all in the textiles. That's right, right. that's textile, right. So that's a very big, the biggest African community. Community can be found in Guangzhou. Yeah, it's so definitely in Guangzhou. There, there's always an issue when it comes to the black community in Guangzhou. Right. So there were issues whereby some black people, there, there are videos on the internet that we can all see, that yeah. some black people were kicked out of their homes. Okay. But the African leadership in Beijing, that embassies, they moved in, and they were able to solve that issue. Yeah. And that was settled. But if I'm talking about my experience at that time, I never had issues during the COVID situation. Uh, my landlady was very helpful. My boss at that time, I remember my wife um, and my daughter left China at that time during the COVID time to Ghana. Yeah. And I, tr I just sent them off um, in Shanghai. When I got back, I was quarantined. Yeah. And for the 14 days that I was in quarantine, my boss, who is a Chinese person, yeah. was always coming in bringing me food items, nice. just drop at my doorstep and I pick it up. Nice. So if I'm speaking about that, yeah. based on my personal experience, yeah, yeah. I never had issues. There were times that maybe because you're a foreigner, you had issues of scanning of code, you know, because if to travel, to go to places, you need to scan your QR code. That's right. There were a few issues here and there, but for the general overview of my life here during the COVID time was okay. I think yeah. I went to the same similar situation like every foreigner in China, yeah. not because I'm a black person. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. I was just very curious about that. Tell me a little bit about your, your expat journey here. And I know that you are, you're building a personal brand right, right. now. And I think you're very, you're very optimistic about being in China to do this. Right. And I wanted, I wanted to know a little bit more about your entrepreneurial journey and why you feel that China is the best spot for you to do that. Um, I live in China and I think like, we are all ambassadors of this world to yes. promote world peace, to promote harmony, uh, people to people relationships. So I had this idea of documenting my life on YouTube. Yeah. And I started with my daughter. My daughter was born in China. And when my wife was pregnant, we were on YouTube looking for information as to how to raise a family in China as a foreigner. And we're not getting so much information. So when my daughter was born, I was like, okay, let me use my family as an example to document our life here. Nice. And people can see that and make decisions about life in China. Yeah. That's why I started YouTube in the first place. But okay. along the line, my family left China and I stopped doing that vlog and I switched to interviews. Right. Because I realized like, there were not so many positive news about China on the YouTube, on the yeah, internet. Yeah, because when you go on the internet, nobody's gonna tell China it's safe. That's right. That's nobody's right. gonna tell China it's convenient. Nobody's gonna tell China it's a beautiful country. You only see like, oh, there is, there's this happening in China. China is a racist society. Uh, the air quality is bad. I mean, but, King, you, were, you were telling me that when you first came here, mm. your perceptions were, 
you know, we can't go out in the yeah, streets, right? Yeah. I mean, you said the first time you saw a Chinese uh, police, police officer. officer. I nearly collapsed because back coming to China, I had a brother here who was living in China for so many years. Yeah. And he said, like, if you go out and teach, you'll be arrested by the police. Oh, wow. Being a foreigner. So when I saw a police officer for the first time in China, I nearly, like, collapsed because I was scared. Yeah. And that really kept me in the box, you know, because right after work, I was scared even to go out. Yeah, yeah. But when I got used to the Chinese people, I realized that, ah, these are cool people. Yeah, yeah. They are not scary. They are not monsters. They will not swallow you up. Yeah. They are open to people when yeah, you can absolutely. speak their language. So, I mean, my life here has been great. And um, I started YouTube doing what is called Living in China series because I realized, like, China needs to tell its story. But we, we people here working as China, working in China as foreigners, have to use our platform to promote China. Yeah. So I started what is called Living in China series, whereby I went on the streets to talk about foreigners just like you. Yeah. Like, I'll meet you and like, how has life been for you for 10 years? And yeah. it's, oh, China is a great country. But people don't believe these stories yeah, yeah. because it's coming from China. Right. If I was living in America or the Canada or the UK and I said, like, this is a beautiful country, people would believe me because it's the West. Yeah. But foreigners saying that China is a convenient society, it's a safe country. I, every May, every year, I go at 5 a.m. and I run on the streets. Yeah, yeah. I have no fears for my life yeah, as a right. black man that yeah. somebody pointed a gun at me right. or calling the police on me because I'm running. Right. I have no concern for my safety living here, but people don't believe these stories because it's coming from China. Right. But I've interviewed over 90 people in China. Yeah. And I don't think all these 90 people are saying something which is not true. That's right. Yeah. That's so you can point. go to my channel and check it out. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, I, I, I love that story. And um, King, I'm going to end the interview here with one final question. I like to ask this to everybody, and it's what is one thing that you want the world to know about China? If there's one thing I want the world to know about China, is China is not what you think. You can only experience China when you travel here. That's right. I have spoken to about 90 people on my channel, and all of them had the same perception I had before coming to China. Yeah. If I've been able to live in China as a black man for 10 years, then you should know there's something about this country that you don't know. But you can only find out when you come here personally and experience the culture, the people, the food, and you're going to love it. Ah, so take a trip to China once in a lifetime. Don't watch me. Don't watch me on YouTube. Don't watch Cyrus. Don't watch any YouTube channel. But just book a trip to China for a day or two. If you don't like it, I'll pay for your trip. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's the offer right there. I love it. I love it. That's, that's, that is a lot of confidence there. Well, I think that's, that is the biggest thing, you know, even for myself going, I've now moved back. I've repatriated. I've gone back home to my country of America. And, uh, you know, being back in the United States has been great because I've been able to share my China journey. And I, I'm always amazed because it, no matter who I meet, no matter how negative their perception of China is, I can always reason with people and share them some interesting perspectives. And I think what's interesting is, is that's, that is our role as really these bridge builders and peacekeepers, right. is that we are trying to offer some nuance and a little bit per perspective, mm. right? Of, hey, I, I, you know, you and I together, we've lived in China for 20 years. Right. So, I mean, we have this perspective. We speak Chinese. We can share with you a little bit of insights that, you know, make China a little bit less intimidating and make China a little bit less more, wow, this is, you know, to be honest, and my biggest, my biggest thing, that the best way that I would answer that question is always that chi life in China is incredibly normal. It's a lot more similar to our lives back in our home countries than you would, you would think. I mean, here we are in a park here today. You know, we, we were talking to some elderly people in the park and we're like, what are you doing here today? We're like, we're just having fun. We're out here having a conversation, we're meeting, we're drinking tea, we're playing checkers, we're, you know, passing the time by. And I mean, many Chinese people, they're out on the streets, they live an active life. You know, I mean, the, the, the parks here is a, a great place to find a lot of locals. And I think it's just about being here on the ground. That's, that's, that's like, why I had to get back to China yeah, after four years. You, you can never talk about China if you've never been to China. That's right. Anybody who has never been to China and talks about China, it's, it's just making a fool out of yourself. That's right. Because you can only talk about China when you've been here and experienced life. Because what the TV will not show you what you want to know. That's right. The TV is there to tell you what you need to know. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> so if you want to experience life, take that trip. Not just about China. Don't listen to the news. Go to Iran. Yeah. Go to Iraq. Go to Afghanistan. Go to Russia. Yeah. Experience. Go to Africa. Yeah. There are beautiful stories that need to be told. But I think the world is too messed up in this point that we are pushing each other yeah. to be the best one, right. right? So right now, if you go on CNN, you're not going to see anything good about right. China. Right. The same way, maybe if you go on Chinese social media, right. you'll not see anything good about America. Right. But I think there are beautiful stories about America, there are beautiful stories sure. about China. Yeah, absolutely. And we can all live in harmony. And that's what we need to do. So, King, thanks, my man. brother. Thank thanks you so much for so, this so opportunity nice to... to be on the channel, man. Absolutely. I Thank appreciate you. this. And like I said, take that trip. Take that trip. Make that bold decision. Visit China in your lifetime. And I mean, you're gonna love it. Absolutely. You're gonna love it. it. Awesome.
Everybody, make sure that you check out King's YouTube channel. We're gonna put the links down in the description below. And as always, thank you for spending time with me here on YouTube. And I can't wait to show you more stuff from our journeys here back in the Middle Kingdom. We'll see you in the next episode soon. Peace out.